Hello, I'm Travis Lockyer. I'm the head of school at Annapolis Christian Academy. I want to welcome you to our Grandparents' Day. It certainly isn't what we had hoped or were planning on, but we're making the best of it. Thank you for spending some time with us. Get a chance to see some videos that kind of open the curtain and get to see behind the scenes as far as what happens on a day-to-day -day basis here at Annapolis. I want to talk a little bit about who we are as a school, so let me read our mission statement. We exist to glorify God by providing an educational community committed to the classical and Christian ideals of truth, goodness, and beauty, the cultivation of wisdom and virtue, and the integration of faith and learning with all of life. So let me break that down for you a little bit. There's two parts that are really important. First, we're unapologetically Christian in what we do. We see God's truth in everything, and we learn everything through the lens of God's truth. Education without that understanding we believe is an education devoid of God and takes people in a place that we don't really don't want to go. So we're, we are, we open God's Word and we talk about it all the time, all day, in all of our subjects. The second part is we're classical. And all that means is that we believe that there are, there are developmental stages of learning, the grammar, logic, and rhetoric stage, that God has, has created people to learn different ways and different stages of life and so we use that to our advantage the grammar stage is building the the foundation of facts the logic stage when kids want to do something with them we teach them formal logic and how to debate eloquently and gracefully and the rhetoric stage polishing it all off speaking and writing persuasively it culminates in a senior thesis where they have to defend um, a, a subject against a panel and all that prepares them for whatever God calls them Beyond our, beyond our walls, not just in college, but in all of life. So we provide a unique and distinctive education here in the south part of Texas. So let's talk a little bit about this year. It's certainly been a unique one, um, obviously with um, the pandemic and COVID and all of that, we've had to have some specific restrictions in place. But thankfully, God has allowed us to open the doors. We've had kids on campus from day one. We're actually nine weeks into our school year, and we've been very blessed. We've been healthy, we've been safe. The kids have been learning and thriving here at school, like they always do, and we're very thankful for that. We've been also offering a synchronous learning opportunity, which means that the kids, whether the kids are at school or they're at home, they're learning alongside together in a live stream of the classroom. We've had to learn a little bit about technology, but again, our teachers have been uh, great about learning and integrating it, and it's been a wonderful experience so far. Lord willing, we hope that um, you know we'll be able to move through this quickly, but while we're here, we're doing our best for our kids and serving our families the best way we possibly can. We've also been able to have athletics. Our volleyball team has been outstanding. Right now, they're undefeated. We've had football. We've had our grammar volleyball teams are starting up. So for us, it's continuing to be full steam ahead. We obviously have the safety procedures and protocols in place, but again, we feel like that God has been watching over us and we're able to do the things that we've been wanting to do to give the kids the best experience possible. We also have some exciting new things that have been happening on campus. We're building a new high school. Uh, those were in the final stages of those preparations. COVID has delayed some of the thing, some of the pieces, but we are moving ahead as fast as we can. We've also opened up a new courtyard area in the middle part of our campus. There's a full court basketball court, gaga ball. If you don't know what that is, ask your grandparent, grand, grandkids. Um, nine square playground. It's been a wonderful space for kids. There's picnic tables. Our kids and families have been able to enjoy that space, and uh, when it's not too terribly hot here in Texas, so. God has blessed us as a school. The, the school here has been, quite honestly, going better than I think anyone expected. So again, we're thankful for your commitment to the school, your willingness to, to partner with us and your families to partner with us. And so please enjoy Grandparents' Day as best you can and looking forward to a time when we can see each other on campus again. We're gonna sign. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing.
know that the Lord, He is God, and He is He who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people, and the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving, and His courts with praise. Be faithful to Him, and bless His name. For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, His truth endures to all generations. Psalm 100 R-E-D red, R-E-D red, I can smell red, I can smell red, fire stops are red, stop and red too, R-E-D red, R-E-D red. Oh, it's a one, oh, it's a one, what is cruncher, oh, it's a one. T W O spells two two two. T W O spells two two two. Two little eyes to look at you. T W O spells two two two. Ready? Clap your hands. thing that Peter is going to do is to show you how they can sing two different parts at one time, which is pretty amazing. Good afternoon, grandparents. We are so glad that you're joining us today. Our first grade students have been working very hard on their stories of the Bible and the timeline. So we would first like to share with you the timeline of the Bible stories that they have learned. First came creation, seven days. Second came the fall and the garden of Eden. Third was Cain and Abel. Fourth, Noah and the flood. Fifth, the Tower of Babel. Sixth, the Nile River. Seventh, Pharaoh the next. Eighth, Pharaoh's and other gods. Nine, the first writing. Ten, Old Kingdom and Mommies. Eleven, 
today is the books of the Bible. The children are learning all 66 books of the Bible. And as of right now, they've learned the first part, which is all of the Old Testament. So we're going to have them sing that song for you now. Ready? Thank you. 
you, grandparents. We hope you enjoyed their presentation. And boys and girls, what do we want to say to our grandparents? Hello, Hello. 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 Hello.
He gave us eyes to see them, and lips that we might tell. How great is God Almighty, who has made all things well.
church experienced a division regarding the divinity of Christ. A man named Arius proclaimed that Jesus is not God, but that he is a separate creation of God. This conflicted with the church's position that Jesus and the Father are one. In a public debate between Arius and Athanasius, the bishop of Alexandria, Athanasius and the other church leaders agreed that Jesus and the Father are one, and they banished Arius and his followers from the church and forbade them from continuing to teach this falsehood. However, Arius and his followers continued to spread their ideas. Arius's phrase, there was a time when the sun was not, became increasingly popular and created division within the church. In response, Emperor Constantine convened a council of church leaders in the city of Nicaea. These leaders, after some time in debate, concluded that scriptures clearly teach that Jesus is God. They wrote the Nicene Creed of 325 to establish a firm foundation for the church doctrine of the Trinity. This is their original form of the Nicene Creed. Goodbye!